What's up YouTube? M1 American here wanted to go over my winter rescue pack and some of the other essential gear that goes with me typically on uh, winter hikes, trainings, or rescues themselves. Um, a lot of this is personal preference, some of this is team associated, but none of this uh, directly reflects the team I work with. Um, we have a little bit of flexibility, so within those boundaries, you just have to understand that this isn't exact. This is mine, and this is what I use. Yours may vary. However, I wanted to show you guys in case you're not into it and you wanted to know more um, or what I use. So I'll briefly explain what all this is and uh, a little bit of detail, but not too deep because there's a lot of stuff to go through and I don't want it to be a... 10 year video. Okay, let's get into it. Okay, so we're gonna go over some clothing essentials and kind of a layering system real quick. Um, that right there is my team helmet. However, because it has no insignias, it looks pretty generic from the outside. Um, I'll show it on camera. Um, typically, that only goes with me if it's a training or rescue itself. So that's just kind of representative of being more rescue related stuff. This jacket would be kind of more devoted if I'm like doing a lot more sitting or riding. Um, if it's like snowmobile, you know, you're sitting down, you're just blasting through the wind. Um, or if you're on a cat, a snow cat or something like that, maybe a razor with like the max tracks on them, whatever it is, you're not doing a lot of hard work. So you're going to want to preserve your heat. Um, that's a great jacket. It has all kinds of features, tons of pockets. One, two, three, four, five, six pockets. You can't really see them, but that's a pocket right there. Um, you can actually sip the radio in there, and there's a hole that comes out, and it pops out right there. The mic will clip to the outside of your jacket, so you can keep the radio warm, which preserves your battery, and dry, which is always a good thing if you don't have a waterproof radio, which most of them aren't. However, you can buy the marine ones, but they don't seem to transmit as well. Aside from that, um, so typically I don't use that unless it's for specific use like staying still. Uh, I do use a layering system that's typically my base layer. Um, I shouldn't say my base layer. I use a wicking shirt and then that. And then I have a Prima Loft jacket, which is a synthetic down made by L.L. Bean. You'll see it in a minute. It's in the backpack. And also a soft shell, which is my uh, very top layer that's also in there. Um, and those three pieces go together, and that's what my layering system is. That I use for hiking because those three pieces all together add up to being about the same weight as that, probably a little bit less than just that jacket itself. The jacket's heavy. You don't want to haul that thing. You're not going to hike in it. That thing is ridiculously hot to hike in. You sweat too much in that and then you're screwed. So, um, For your feet, uh, typically I would wear boots. Uh, snow boots if it's really bad. Uh, not always. Um, some MSR. These are the Denali's. Those work fantastic. That's an older pair with the, uh, the tails that uh, clip to the back of them to give you a little more flotation when it's really powdery. These are OR or Outdoor Research Gators. Fantastic gators. Had these for a long time. Beat the heck out of them. And they work great. Good design to these. Excellent work, Outdoor Research. That's not a plug, by the way. I have no affiliation with any of these brands. Um, these are just some cheap Big Five gloves. I burn through them. Typically, I just wear the fingertips out, whatever. I don't want a pair of really expensive gloves. Um, I rarely use them, but when I do, it's pretty abusive. So I really, most of the time, they're in the backpack. And I have a thinner glove. You'll see it in a minute. Rather than those, those just if I'm sitting still, kind of like the jacket. You know, they just keep your hands warm when you're not moving. But if I'm hiking and active, I really, I rarely use anything even remotely that thick. Um, then I have a chest rig, and I have a video on that itself if you want. Uh, look down at the bottom, I'll try and put a link to it. Um, and then a ice axe, which doesn't always go with me. It's a bit heavy. It's a lot of weight. Um, it is a great tool. I would not call it an essential, though. Um, however, it does what it's supposed to do very well. And this is a slightly older model than some of the newer ones. This would be more for... Uh, walking, passing glaciers, stuff like that. Works good as an anchor. 
um, and a picket and all kinds of other things. So it's really good at what it does, but it rarely goes with me. And instead I would more or less use the uh, snow poles, the ski poles instead, which are strapped to the backpack, one on each side. And then the Avi shovel, which is on the outside and the handle is buried around the other side. Um, over here, what you see is a sit pad. It's just a piece of foam, which is pretty wonderful, uh, especially if you're in like something mucky, slightly wet, or you want to just save your knees because it's really bad to kneel down on hard surfaces. And, you know, over time it wears them, your knees out. So uh, another thing that you're not going to see in here would be a probe and a beacon. This is more for avalanche uh, safety and rescue. Um, those aren't in here. Those usually I pick up at a uh, cache um, for the team with the team that I go with. So that stuff I don't have to pay for. Fortunate for me. So uh, let's get into this backpack though. Okay, so on the outside of the pack it has a few pockets. It has a big one on top here. Uh, the Avi shovel is really easy to detach. It's just on a bungee cord. Um, at the bottom, it just basically, the two uh, bungees basically pull together and it keeps it in, but it's really fast to come out. No, it's never fallen out. It doesn't get hung up on anything because it's on the backside and it sits pretty flush. Um, old shovel, made of aluminum, works pretty good though. Handle on this side. And yeah, I kind of have everything loose for the video to make this a little bit easier. I would typically have stuff cinched down a little bit better. That's that. It's about a little bit higher than my backpack. But there's another sleeve in here. It actually extends out twice as far. I don't know if you can see that, but fancy, right? And it's a uh, pretty sturdy shovel at that. Like, you can... I mean, no, no Avi shovels are really strong, but man, this thing, it can really do its job well. So anyways, on from that, have the ski poles. Come on, the collapsible ones, maybe I should have loosened that one more. It's that rubber handle hangs up on everything. All right, so two ski poles, one on the other side. I'm not going to pull it out. It looks exactly like this one. Um, the sit mat. So, pop quiz, does anybody recognize this? That yellow stripe should kind of give it away. And it's made of like a neoprene foam, right, with this outer bright uh, orangish red surface. Both sides. What is it from, guys? Anybody know? Ten extra points if you can guess. All right. I use it for a sit pad, though. Let's see in the comments if you can figure it out. Okay, for the rest of this... I have some stuff down in the side pockets, but really it's basically nothing. A pair of wool blend socks and a uh, swath, uh, or stuff that you can make a swath. It's basically just a triangular piece of cloth, or two of them, and you can make a sling and a swath for, you know, hurt shoulder, arm, collarbone, blah, 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 more medical stuff. Uh, so I'm not going to pull it out because it's just cheap cloth. That's all it is. Um, but we're going to break into the top here spin this around oh you know what real quick though so as this backpack as for this backpack goes um the backpack itself is really adjustable it's phenomenal actually it's jansport i love this backpack i got it from cheapandsteep.com it was on a clearance or a sale they do great sales if you don't know cheap and steep go to their site they're a good site you get addicted to it quick uh, infinitely adjustable backpack. The pad's adjustable, the straps are adjustable, pretty much everything's adjustable, and it carries weight very well. Not the biggest backpack. This I would consider more of a large day pack. Um, if you're a rescuer, EMS, anything like that, and you do uh, field stuff, outdoor stuff, good backpack. It's lightweight, carries well, holds a lot of junk. There you go. That's my review on it. <laughs> I really like it. It was 150 bucks. I only paid about... 50, 65, somewhere in there, I can't remember. Killer deal though. Um, yeah, so since we're on that, I have a uh, watch strapped to the uh, shoulder strap here and a whistle strapped to that one. Also, lots of redundancy. On my chest rig, I have a lot of the same stuff too. Also, strapped to the shoulder strap here is a water bottle. I do not do the whole camelback system. I really despise those things. 
Now, I know a lot of people are really, really uh, for those Pro Camelback, you know, the bladders inside. I don't like them. They're a hassle to clean. They're a hassle to put up with. For me, the water bottle's just as fast. It doesn't carry as much in that, but I have more in the top pocket. You say, hey, guy, you know, reach in the top pocket, swap me out a bottle real quick while you're walking. It takes no time, right? And then I have extra stuff on the inside of the pack. So plenty of water, but more than that, water purification stuff inside. All right, so on that note, let's get into the top pocket. Okay, so up in here, and we are going to remove this guy because he's just going to stab me this whole time. Up in here, oh, look, there it is. Extra Gatorade. I do like Gatorade. Um, I have a lot of water in here as well, but Gatorade on the outside because that's typically when I'm walking. I'm doing a lot of work, hiking, hauling stuff in, gear, whatnot, people. Um, but I have water on the inside of this, about a liter and a half. So some cordage. And real quick, this is not to be confused with paracord. Paracord, in my opinion, sucks. This stuff weighs about the same. It's way stronger. Well, actually, I shouldn't say that. It's probably about four to 500 pounds paracords, typically about 500 pound test. However, this stuff, you can tie a knot in it so much better and you can undo that knot. Uh, so much easier. The reason for that is because this stuff doesn't crush. Paracord flattens out when you tie it in a knot. Oop, focus, right? This stuff doesn't. That makes it a lot easier. The other thing is this is way more water resistant than paracord. Paracord sucks up water and tends to swell on knots and things and makes them a lot harder to deal with. Not only that, you got to wring it out before you put it back in your pack. This stuff, you can basically just... Run your hand down it, wipe the outside of the sheath off, and that's it. So pound for f pound and cost, this is a hundred times better in my opinion. Um, if you're stuck on paracord, move on. This is this is where it's at right here. I'm telling you, try it. You're gonna agree with me. Some light carabiners. This is typically to attach things to my backpack or uh, whatever I have to do. Maybe it's for hauling somebody out or doing you know, setting up a rigging, but typically not for like climbing, although you can, they're rated too, but they're light. So I keep them in the top. This is just a uh, bag cover, covers the entire backpack on the outside from here back. This is the part that goes to my back, by the way. Um, this is a waterproof backpack. However, having a second membrane around it for when it's like sleet, like a rain snow, a uh, wet snow, um, that stuff just penetrates through everything doesn't matter i mean unless you have like just a bomber um backpack like a canyoneering pack which i'm not going to keep one of those um this is a light fix to that problem so typically i only keep this when it's winter season and that's kind of what this is set up for right now okay so some hand warmers put them in your pockets when your fingers get cold stick your fingers in your pockets whatever um, shove them in your boots for a little bit, keep your toes warm, um, throw them into a sleeping bag, keeps you about 5 to 10 degrees warmer than the sleeping bags rated. Awesome, you have that and maybe a, a bivy sack, like an emergency one, you're doing fair. Not good, but fair. Um, some on-the-go snacks, some peanuts. Here is just a bandana, this is typically for around the back of my neck or to wipe the sweat off my forehead. More than not, that's what it's for. Um, that's a, like a ski mask. Um, this is for when it's really blizzarding and it's just getting hard to breathe, hard to, uh, just do anything. Snow's getting in every nook, cranny, and crevice. That's also why I have a schmog. This goes around your neck and protects the, uh, the hole your head comes out of in your clothes from snow getting just blasted down your shirt, which it will, unless you're wearing really really good snow gear which you're typically not always this is a fast fix um these are the gloves okay these are like 99.9 percent .9 of the time what i'm wearing uh they're a rubber and not a latex i'm not sure i mean not latex spandex it's really stretchy it's not cotton they dry out fairly quickly um so they do retain a tiny bit of water but the dexterity in these things is amazing those mechanics gloves got nothing on these if you haven't tried these look them up try them out these gloves are awesome most of the guys on my team wear these for just about everything summer to winter 
Um, these gloves are amazing, and I probably have a half a dozen pair of them. And moving on, I have just a cheap beanie. That's for when I, my head's really cold, but typically I wear a, just like a mesh hat. Um, some first responder notes. That was just a waterproof container, you, or a uh, map thing. I forget what they're called. It unfolds. Some water purification filtration system. It's a Sawyer filter with the bag that comes with it. The Sawyer filter plugs into here. There's a hose, or a straw, that plugs into the other side. So you basically fill the bag up, right? Dump it in the stream, whatever. Fill it up with water. Plug that into it. And then put the hose on the other end and then find your water bottle and then you squeeze the bag and it pushes it through the filter into your stuff. So you don't have to filter what's in here. You just scoop it up, start walking. You could do it as you go or once you get to camp or wherever. Uh, iodine, just in case you're into some nasty stuff and you're really unsure of it, you always have a backup. This weighs a fraction of what the Catadine filter weighs. And if you haven't looked into these, you should because this is only about $20. It's like 19 bucks or something like that, depending where you find it. Look into it. Great system. People are starting to adopt this more and more now. I personally love it. So whatever that's worth to you. Uh, cheap headlamp. Cheap one. Got this at like Walmart. It's their Ozark Trail. I don't know what it is. Something like that. I'm pretty sure it is. Um, it has all kinds of modes, has a flood mode, has a spot mode, has the red beacon stuff for map reading and whatnot. Um, just a cheap, cheap headlamp. I think it's like 12 or 20 bucks, something like that. But if you lose it, eh, who cares? It's not an expensive one. No big deal. Uh, nicer Phoenix flashlight. I think this is the PD35 with a couple mods on it. Some reflective tape and some uh, hand leash. And then a small light carabiner just to clip it to my chest rig when I'm not using it. Um, and if you're wondering, the reflective tape, how are you going to find it if you lose the flashlight it's attached to? Well, that's why you have backups. And I actually have another one than that. Usually in my pocket, I keep a Phoenix uh, E12. So I have ways to find this, right? But they're not my primaries. And that thing's like a floodlight. It's like 950 lumens. Okay, that's it for the top pocket. Okay, so everything that's in the top pocket, which is a lot, is the stuff that I use kind of when I'm on the go, right? So there's a lot in there, and it's a lot of weird miscellaneous stuff. That's kind of the tools that I'm not going to keep on my chest pack, because then it ends up being way too big and bulky and gets in the way if you got to zip up your jacket or something. So that's why I have so much in there. But into the main compartment. Flip that up. Move this back. And this backpack expands out a lot more. I got it kind of compressed down a little bit, but you could fit more in it if you wanted. Um, I would prefer not to do an overnight in this, but at worst I could. Okay, so in the top, I kind of have this set up in the order that I would use this stuff most to least. All right, so one of the most important things I would probably use, most likely, clothing, right? So, soft shell jacket, waterproof, right? That's my very top layer. Nothing special. Um, here's the Primaloft. This is the L.L. Bean. It's a Primaloft jacket. Great jacket, by the way. Uh, it's got a fluff up, but uh, really like this. Um, however, because it's the same material on the inside and the outside, if you start to sweat in it, it does start to absorb a little bit. It dries out really fast because it's Primaloft, it's not uh, down, so it doesn't like absorb it and stay wet forever. This stuff dries out. That's what's great about Primaloft. And it's, I would say, very comparably uh, warm uh, compared to like 800 filled down, um, pound for pound. Good jacket though. If you're interested, you should look those ones up. Been using this one for not quite a year now, but I do love it. Here's a uh, just kind of a cheap foil emergency blanket tarp. Um, use it as a ground tarp. You can use it to wrap yourself up. You can use it to make a shelter. It does have grommets in it. Um, it's fairly thick. It's obviously, you can kind of tell, it's not going to fold up a whole lot smaller than this. 
but this is kind of a backup. I put a hole in it a while ago, building a snow shelter. So if I come across somebody that's, you know, hypothermic or needing some help, you know, I can give this to them, let them use it, let them keep it, whatever it is. And it's not going to hurt my feelings. These are like 20 bucks, you know, so it's not too bad. And it's not like a primary thing I have. Okay. Oh. Um, first aid kit. Uh, this is based off of what we need to have as our personal first aid kits. And it's a good first aid kit. If you're curious what's in it, let me know in the comments down below and I'll try and make a video on this one. I have other first aid kit videos, not this one. But they're pretty similar. Um, some... Some on-the-go foods, snacks, bars, just some good tasting stuff, some applesauce, some more peanuts, some, uh, there's a thing of, uh, uh, tuna fish in here, and a spoon. Nothing I have to heat up or maintain or anything like that. This is all stuff for on-the-go, right? This is not to be spending the night if I don't have to. And this, and all these kind of sit in a circle down here, so they're all about the same. I have a CPR mask, um, it's a, the bigger, the full face mask, and then a uh, Sam splint, so makes life a little bit easier, especially when you're in the business and finding people, uh, yeah, you definitely want something like this, you know, put a barrier between you and them. Uh, that's the water, let's see. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. There you go. Shelter and accessories, right? So this is interesting. This is kind of its own bag deal, obviously. So another tarp, but this is just like a sill nylon tarp in this bag. Um, it's got the grommets and everything. Cheaper tarp, so if I rip it or if I got to use it for something else, not that big of a deal. I do have nicer sill nylon tarps. Uh, Bushcraft USA makes one. Uh, similar size to this, but it's like an OD green. Love that thing. Very nice tarp, but I'm not going to bring it on the missions that I bring this pack for. Um, that does fine. It's waterproof. It's bright orange, that same color. Uh, two large trash bags. Uh, if you don't know what trash bags are good for in the wild besides trash, uh, you should look up Hug a Tree program. Um, hopefully that's easy for you to find. Uh, but you can use that the trash bags for filling with like leaves and stuff, make a bed out of, make it into a rain jacket, protect your stuff, um, use it as a ground cloth, whatever. And then one of these uh, small micro bivouac sacks, the bivy. Um, so you've seen the bigger ones of these and I have the bigger one. I've used the bigger one. Shaves about five to 10 degrees off if you have a sleeping bag or whatever the current conditions are. So the idea is these don't make life comfortable. These make it so you get to the next day, right? So if you're really hating life and you're feeling like the shivers and you're maybe, maybe feeling like you could go hypothermic, one of these could just shave enough off so you can make it to the next day. You're going to be unhappy, but you're going to make it to the next day to complain, which that's a good thing, right? Um, last thing that's in this bag is just a bunch of cordage. Uh, there's about four four little cordelettes in there. I'm not going to pull them all out. And that's to build the actual shelter with. And that's pretty much that. Next up. <clears throat> Fire, water, and signaling. Um, just like what it says, right? And individual little bags inside of here. Uh, that's just some literature. Uh, this is a life straw. Um, that's just another way to do fast water. Um, some batteries, right? Different size batteries. I have two size batteries for uh, the two size flashlights I have. Um, that's an emergency flare. That's actually a rescue flare. So it burns a vibrant uh, red color. It's kind of a pinkish red. Um, but it's great for starting fires in the wettest of conditions. If you can't get a fire started with that, you're in some shit conditions. Um, and a bundle of all kinds of other fire making stuff. You got lighters, you've got uh, trioxane, some matches. There's an esbit, however you say it, tablet, solid state fuel. 
there's a ferro rod, there's a candle, and right in here, that's actually dryer lint. And for good reason, when you think about it, you're supposed to remove it from your dryers because it's a fire hazard. Hey, perfect, it's free. I can use tons of it. And that's pretty much that. The signaling part of it, if you didn't catch it. Oh, I have a signal mirror, but it's in the first aid kit. And on my chest rig, which is a mirror inside the compass, you flip it open. Um, the flare works for signaling, and so does fire making. You can make smoke and stuff. So, signaling. Um, I label all my stuff like this, because if somebody else needs to go through my backpack, it makes it easy for them if I tell them, hey, go grab such and such. Grab something to make fire out of my backpack real fast. Or, you know, the first aid kit, or whatever it is. It makes it easy for them to find. Otherwise, they just get lost with all these bags. Okay. So, water, liter and a half. Uh, you could either make something with it, or there you go. It's just water. I don't always carry this much, but typically I do have it on me at the beginning. There we go. Two, two more Gatorades. Could you tell I like Gatorade? A lot of electrolytes. If you're not eating a lot, you're going to need the electrolytes. However, if you're feeding yourself well while you're out there, typically you're not going to need this kind of stuff like Gatorade. You just go with water. But I like to have the options because I tend to run hot, so I sweat a lot more. So it's good to have that. Replace it fast while you're on the go. You don't have to stop. Take a break. This is an Alpine BOD harness um, with an ATC. So it's just a standard harness, there's no padding, it's basically just a bunch of webbing. Um, this is kind of bare minimum, even though they've gotten some lighter, more compact versions out now, but I haven't invested in that yet. This doesn't always go with me, this is just depending on the exact situation which that's kind of going to relate to what comes out next. Which is this. It's kind of a compact repel kit. I've got other videos on similar stuff, but not this one. And unfortunately, I'm not going to pull this whole thing apart, but there's some Dyneema webbing in here. There's this uh, six mil cord. Uh, yeah, I think it's five or six mil. I forget. Um, and then there's... A uh, micro descender uh, repel device. It's like a figure eight with ears, some carabiners. That's a tib lock. That's so you can ascend back up or stop something, or you can make a pulley system. There's the uh, micro descender, and the cord is 7.5 mil. Uh, I think it's Petzl. I can't remember. I believe it's Petzl, but it's also waterproof. The whole thing is set up in here, ready to go. So as I pull it out, first thing first, um, you know, anchor around the tree. So that's the thing on the top and then the repel device and then the bag. And you just throw the whole thing once you've got it tied around your tree. And there you go. This weighs a bit, a um, couple pounds. So this is kind of like the harness. It kind of only goes sometimes. Depends on the exact situation. If I feel there's a need or whatever might be going on. Um, would not typically do regular climbing with that. It's only 7.5 mil. So it's good enough to do a hand line, some light rappel. You know, it's it, it'll get the job done in a hasty situation, a tag line, you know, whatever it may be. So, so you have something, options. Those are what you need. Um, I'll put that there for a minute. Some two 20-foot webbings. These are things I'm required to have. Four NFPA carabiners. Um, these are all uh, SMC NFPA rated. These are their light D locking carabiners. Fantastic carabiners, bang for buck, and how strong they are. And they have a wide gape, gate, gape. <laughs> they have a really wide gate, makes it easy to deal with these things, especially when you're uh, locking on to something bigger, um, bigger rope, doing it, passing a knot or something. So there's that. As you saw here, this is just a uh, collapsible saw, right? 
Um, this can be used for all kinds of stuff. Doesn't always go with me, but for the weight, it doesn't weigh that much. And it didn't cost that much. Got it at the local hardware store. You can cut firewood with it. You could make a splint, a hasty splint out of it. Some crutches. You could make a, a sled to drag somebody out. All kinds of uses. You just got to use your imagination and it's just a tool, you know. It's got more than one use. So for the cost and for how much it weighs, it's not terrible. It's not super light, but it's not terrible. Um, and it's got good grip. This is all like a black rubber. And then that locking feature, which hasn't failed yet. So I'm okay with this for now. <laughs> all right, that's that. And that's pretty much it for the backpack. Okay, you guys, so you've pretty much seen everything that I carry on the winter uh, trainings and or rescues or sometimes personal stuff. A lot of this isn't for personal, but a lot of it can be related. You know, the snowshoes, the poles, a lot of the uh, layering system for clothing. So take it for whatever it's worth to you. I just wanted to share this with you guys. This isn't like the, I'm not the end all expert or anything like that. I do train with the stuff and a lot more. Um, however, this was more of the personal side of the stuff. So the stuff that I use personally that I can vary for the most part. So if you guys are interested to know anything more about any of this stuff, please leave it in the comment below. Let me know. If you have any suggestions or anything, let's talk about it. Drop that down in the comments too. Other than that, uh, I just want to leave you guys with one piece of advice. It's more fun to go out and do it yourself than to watch it on the screen. So get out there and do it, but be smart. Do your research first. Don't be a dummy and go out there and get hurt. It's a lot of work to rescue somebody from a uh, really poor situation. It's about five to 10 guys to every one person that you have to pull out. It's a big effort. So on that note, if you guys have any questions, leave it down below. I will talk to you later and hope you guys have fun. Peace out.